hata mia tatu kutegemea na ile kazi ambayo tunafanya. Isi kazi ndiyo tunategemea kwa sababu tukuna watoto ambayo tunasomesha. Na wengi wetu kati ya wa mama kuna single mothers na kuna widows. Kama mimi mwenyewe mimi ni mama ambaye ni na watoto wanne na mimi sina mme. Wanaangu alisha fariki miaka sita iliyopita. Kwa hivyo wengi wetu tunapitia changamoto kama haya kwa sababu mimi sina mme, sina mtu yote kunisaidia. Nina watoto niliachiwa watoto wanne. Hakuna mtu wa kunisaidia kwa wakati huu. School fees ninadai kwa sababu watoto wengine wadogo hawajasoma. Kwa hivyo tunapitia changamoto kama hii na ambaye sio mimi peke yangu wala tuko na wengi ambaye tunapitia haya. Kwa wakati huu wa corona tumekuja katika hii barabara maana kuna wengi ambaye tulikuwa tunafanya kazi kama mimi mwenyewe nilikuwa ninafanya kazi pande za kituzuru nikifanyia mama moja kwa nyumba mimi niko na idea ya kuweza kupika naweza kutengeneza kitu kidogo cha vitu vizuri chakula kizuri naweza pika lakini nilikuwa nikifanya nikirudi kwangu kwa nyumba nikikuja kukaa na watoto wangu ikawa sasa ni mdosi wangu mtu ambaye mwajiri wangu akaona ninatoka ninarudi nikitoka ninarudi anaona kama hii corona mimi ndio nitabeba kutoka nje niweze kupeleka pale kwa boma yake watu wakawa na uoga ya ugonjwa akawa nikasimamishwa abaki na mtu mmoja maana tulikuwa wa mama wawili kuna mmoja wa kuangalia watoto na ku, ku, kuishi pale mimi nilikuwa kazi yangu ni kupika na kusaidia mambo na pasi na usafi akaniambia sasa kwa sasa hivi vile hata sisi tumeka kwa nyumba hakuna hata pesa kwa hivyo wewe utaka nyumbani tutaiangalia baadaye wakati corona itakuwa imeisha ambaye hatukujua ni lini hata wakati huu hatujajua ni mpaka lini itaisha kwa hivyo tuko na hiyo changamoto tukarudi sasa tuliporudi kwangu kwa nyumba siwezi kushinda kukaa kwa nyumba maana sina chochote sina chochote yenye itanifanya nikae kwa nyumba watoto ndio hawa wananiangalia wanataka chakula isi kazi tuki, ukifanya kazi ndio unapata malipo maana ni pesa kidogo ambayo huwezi kufanya useme uweke ume, useve uweze kukula pole pole kwa hivyo nikiwauna kazi uko na shida kubwa watoto wanakungoja pale wanataka chakula watoto wanataka mavazi wanataka wakati huu hata tutaki mavazi tunataka ya kuweka kwa tumbo na kulipa rent kitu kikubwa sana ambaye hiyo hiyo ndio janga kubwa katika maisha yetu hata tukiweka corona kando kidogo <laughs> na shida ya rent <laughs> corona hiyo hapo hapo simama hapo tu kidogo alafu uh, nafikiri kuna we, wengi watauliza swali eh asante sana sasa wangare karibu what do you make of the uh, difference between the uh, different communities uh, or the different feedback we've got in the surveys Uh, thank, thank you, Irungu, and uh, it's a real pleasure to be here, and it's a real pleasure to be here with Elizabeth uh, and to hear the actual, uh, what's happening on the ground, we took for ground. Uh. So, you know, on one, on one side, we have a government or we have a situation where we're trying to manage a pandemic, and a pan this pandemic is affecting the world in ways that has never been seen before, right? So what our government is trying to do on one hand is to try to protect its citizens, by having them stay at home or, uh, or be a few hours to kind of make sure that people are not interacting as much so that the spread of the disease is managed. But on the other hand, we have it affecting the economy in a negative way because if people are not supposed to be interacting as much, we find that they're not able to go to work, they're not able to uh, engage in the economy in the ways that they used to. And that has affected uh, you know, their bottom line and uh, their household income extremely. So we're seeing here uh, an example with, with, with Mr. Odipo and with many other uh, people who, especially those who work in the informal sectors. In, a, in, a, in this situation where Kenya has uh, opted to, you know, kind of form a perimeter around the highly affected areas, and these tend to be the urban areas, right? And what you find is that, um, and, and you and I both know, Rungu, when things really get sick, we go to Ushago, to Ushago to kind of uh, smooth out our income. But now this is not an option. This is not an option for many. So if the government on one hand is going to try to protect us and try to uh, stop the spread of corona by creating this kind of perimeter around uh, the highly affected areas, what it has to do on the other hand is to support people who are now in, in, inordinately affected by this situation. How do they do this? 
we, we just looked at the survey, you said, you know, rent is a big issue, food is a big issue, work is a big issue. So we need the government to now step in in a strong way to provide for people who are not able to engage in the economy as they used to. So what does this look like? This might look like rental subsidies. It may look like uh, if government has government housing, they should uh, put a moratorium on, on uh, renting rental houses. They should provide for food, uh, you know, food to people who are vulnerable. They should allow for um, uh, they should allow for things like free electricity, free water, maybe even free Wi-Fi for communication. So these are some of the core things that a government, a government like ours that has little money. Let's not let's not pretend that. We are we are a big economy. We are a country that is is a is a middle income country, but it's a low middle income country. We don't have a lot of resources. So saying that we have to, so our ability to give money to people who are uh, are not who are disproportionately affected is limited. Even if we're talking about cash transfers, it's very limited uh, our ability to provide that. But on the other hand, things like electricity, like I said, electricity, water, Wi-Fi, those are things that can be provided in kind. And I think uh, that might help uh, uh, people like uh, Miss Elizabeth here and and the community, especially those in the informal sectors, to ride the wave and to get through this hard time. Well, very good. So I'm going to I'm going to invite um, comments and questions from um, participants here also to reflect on what they are seeing, um, particularly on this theme of, you know, the um, I guess the differential impact, the different impact between different classes of people um, at this time during COVID. And um, I thought I saw a hand there from Sheila Wamahio. Um, but I think she may have been testing the technology. I do see a hand from Isaac Warambo. So I will um, uh, acknowledge him first and uh, invite him to speak. Um, we have a rule on the um, Kili logs, and this happened. Uh, uh, it's a rule that we developed after we had one participant who was not uh, the most polite of people, if I can put it that way. Um, that uh, we will only acknowledge you to speak if we can, uh, if you can put on your video. So I'd encourage everybody to just uh, remove the afro like mine a little bit, and um, perhaps uh, if you can put on your video, then we will allow you to speak. Isaac, uh, would you like to join us? And uh, the rest, if you can uh, again use the use the technology just to indicate uh, that you would like to raise your hands. Welcome, Isaac. I think Daniel, you need to uh, unmute him. And while that's happening, I'm just going to uh, not call out people by name, but just to say there are a number of uh, and people on this call that uh, people you will run into uh, on the streets of uh, Kilimani and uh, some Texans. I can see a couple there and I think there are a couple of Europeans. Um, so um, you're all very much welcome. Isaac, are you uh, unmuted yet? Yes, I am. Uh, excellent. Uh, if you could just put on your camera and then we can see you. How do you put on the camera? So down the bottom, uh, you should see a, um, an option called mute and then video just click on the video um, i should check whether you're on your phone or um uh, computer or maybe we just allow you to ask your question isaac you are you're regular on this uh, call but i'll request others to practice uh, putting on their videos on isaac do you have a question or, or a comment Yes, I want to know. Yeah, there you are. Hi, Isaac. I want to know if the lady, how are that? Hello? Go ahead. We can hear you barely, but we yes, can hear you. I was asking if I can get the lady. That's my comment for now. Okay, the, the comment is a bit um, is a bit unclear. Just type it on the in the chat, and I'll pick it up. Huh? Okay, so okay, Alafu. Um, I think I have another question. I have a question from Koi, uh, which goes to Angare. Um, so Angare, take a note of that in the chat room. Is our issue as a country really a lack of resources, or? Um, uh, a lack of prioritization. Uh, great, uh, great question. So um, I'm being told that. Um, oh, okay. Sorry, we have a. There's a system that uh, Daniel is following. So um, I am harassing people to put on their videos with no 
uh, possibility. Um, so um, let me ask uh, uh, any other questions from um, or comments. Yeah, we are operating on a webinar, not a Zoom call, so um, there's actually restrictions. If you can raise your hands by clicking, then we can take um, uh, we can uh, uh, promote you to the um, to the microphone. But I think maybe as we're waiting for others to um, raise their hands, Wangari, do you want to take um, a, a, a shot at that question? Yeah, actually, uh, thank thank you, Rungu and Corey. That is a very interesting question. Um, it's not one or the other, to be honest. It's actually both. Uh, we are a country with limited resources. We are not, uh, and that's why we, you know, we're classified as such. Uh, but on the other side, and what I do actually on my day-to-day -day job is supporting government to prioritize the limited resources it has in a way that makes sense in the provision of goods and services to citizens on the ground. So what does this look like? It looks like saying, what, uh, what is your plan for the next 10 years as a, as a government in terms of providing goods and services for citizens? How can we budget effectively against the different sectors for these, uh, for these plans? And then how can we resource and finance that budget to be able to realize what's happening, uh, to realize uh, service provision on the ground? So um, you, do, you do have a lot of challenges on the ground when it comes to the usage or the utility of the, of the financing uh, and the budgeting that we have um, in government. So what we, what we try to do, and for example, if what we looked at recently was the example of the county emergency fund. I mean, as a, you know, even as a first step, when the pandemic first uh, uh, set, uh, you know, came onto the shores of Kenya, our first step should have been said, you know, what do we have in our county emergency fund and how can we deploy that immediately to start to support us uh, out of this, uh, uh, this, uh, this situation. But what we found is that the county emergency fund, whether it's resourced or not, it's not well resourced to begin with, uh, even though it's resourced, there are certain policy and legal framework or parameters around which that money can be used. One of the, rule, one of the uh, legal frameworks is that only 2% of that money that's in that fund can be used in any year. So even if you have $10 billion shilling, whatever it is, in that uh, fund, you can only use 2%. Now, if this is a county emergency fund, how then does that translate to support on the ground? We really need to look at the structures that we have in place and reconfigure them, reframe them to actually be responsive to what we have on the ground. So yes, uh, a long answer to a short question, it's both. Uh, and we need to make sure that both are, are strong to support uh, the community going forward, especially the most vulnerable communities. That's great response. Let me invite uh, Elizabeth. If you, if you are talking to the, the president today, just now, he's listening. In fact, he might even, you know, he's from Kilimani. So he yeah. might be even on this uh, Kililogs without us knowing. What would you tell him that you, you want him to do with uh, the, uh, the government money? What would you want government to do at a time like this? Kile kitu ningeongea na rais wangu ningeweza kumpata kama siku ya leo ningeweza kumuongelesha kumkumusi kumu, sana wese kujua vile watu wa mama wanakaa hapa nje shida tuko naye mingi sana ambayo tuko naye hapa nje ambapo kwa sasa hivi na kuambia watu wengi kama mimi ambapo ninaishi kwa slum wa mama wengi wana shida hata vile watalisha watoto wao shida ya chakula Shida ya vile wataweza kulipa manyumba zao. Hasa wakati huu ambaye watoto tuko nao kwa manyumba. Ninge musii sana aweze kuwa na mipangilio ya kuweza kujua vile watu wake wanaishi katika inji yake ya Kenya. Mana tuko na shida mengi sana ambaye tuko nae kwa wakati huu. Mimi hata wakati ngine ninaona ni kama sina raisi wa kuweza kunitawala kwa sababu ninapitia shida mingi sana kama jana hata nimefungiwa nyumba yangu ambaye ninaishi ninaenda kuomba agent usiku aweze kunifungulia nyumba maana kama wakati huu siwezi kupata hata ndururu hata saa hii ninakaa hapa hata shilingi kumi sina na mimi ni mkenya kwa hivyo kama anaweza kuwa na mipangilio ya vile anaweza ku economy yetu ya Kenya vile inaweza kusaidiwa tuweze kuishi kama raia ya Kenya maana wakati mwingine tuna, tunaona kama hatuko we are not belonging to Kenya how we are passing difficulties in our life, especially this time whereby we go to the road, we are looking for this work, 
The policemen are also chasing us away from the road. They want to arrest us. Sometimes even they arrest us. There was a time they arrested so many women then took them to the, the custody there. They stayed there two day, two nights there because we don't know anywhere to go. So even if we are arrested, we are still just going to the road because we have no any way how we can live. We don't know tomorrow we'll reach. So ningeongelesha tu president wangu ni mwambie kuna wali ambaye hawana awesi kuwajali kama president wetu. Very good. Asante. So there are two questions from uh, one Purity Mukami. Uh, the first question is, um, what are the best survive? What are some of the survival strategies um, that people are doing? That people have to survive this period. What strategies are you using, Elizabeth? What have you seen other um, women and men using during this time? How are they adapting? How are they being able to cover rent, uh, to to feed people, and so on? If I can ask you that question first. Okay, kwa sasa hivi, okay, kama sisi ambaye unuwa mama ambaye tunakaa kwa barabara, tuna, tulikuwa tunategemea hii kibarua. Maana, hakuna njia nyingine ambaye tutatumia. Atuna, atuna pesa yenye mtu utasema ninaweka kuwa, kwa biashara. Na hata hiyo biashara kwa wakati huu, haiendelei, hakuna pesa ya kuwe, watu wata kununua vitu. Kwa hivyo kwa sasa hivi, hakuna hata hiyo biashara. Hakuna, mi, mimi kama mimi ninasema naenda kwa barabara nipate mama moja ni mfulie nguo niweze kupata hata kama ni kuomoshe vyombo anipatie 300 niweke kesho maybe nirudi niweke ni, ni, ni sani hata kama nikipata 1000 1000 nipatie hata kama tuseme in a week nipeane 1000 but i can not even afford that 300 in a day whereby sometimes for example myself now i'm even having uh, a deni debt from the mama ya mboga. And even I don't know when will I pay that. Because they know you are at home. They know you are, they are seeing you there every time. If I walk away, sometimes some, they might think that I'm going to work somewhere. But I'm just going sitting on the road. I come back in the evening. I have nothing. So kwa sasa hivi, I don't know how people like, people like me who are staying in the slums, I don't know. There is no any way, I tell you. We are having a rent uh, like two months. There are people, this is the third month people even having the, the, the rent allowances. We don't have money at the moment. I'm going to ask Asante. I'm going to ask um, uh, Daniel to queue up um, a couple of the uh, interviews that we did. Um, oh, apparently uh, we're not able to do that right now. Okay. So we'll move to the next uh, question. And I think the next question was uh, directed also by Purity. And it was a question that um, was uh, asked, and I'll try and pick it up again, yeah. What is the best way of identifying the people who need most support at a time like this? And maybe that's a question for Elizabeth also. Okay, how we can identify these, uh, these people Especially, we are talking about the, these women that are, are uh, seeking for these jobs. How we can, uh, you can... Uh... So let me just give you an example. Eh? Yeah. So there, there are probably, the Kilimani Project Foundation has, um, has registered and interviewed about 250 women. Yes. If we were, had only the resources to support 30 women or 50 women, what is yeah. the best way of uh, finding out the ones that need food or they need support oh, most? Okay, okay, now I'm getting What you. would you do? You know, like the way we are sitting there in the, on the road there looking for these jobs, there are those people who are there all the time. All the time they are there because this is their office. They come from their houses coming to work. And mm. usually the, the, before there was a way that you come and you come back with something. Before this corona came, we used to go there, we work. Sometimes you come even with 1,500, depending with the person whom you have worked for. Mm -hmm. So at this time, you cannot even have people. They, there are people who want uh, ladies to work for them. But because of this corona, have stopped each and everyone. They don't want you to go inside their gates. They don't want people in the apartments. So at this time, it's very difficult for us even to this to get this. But how you can you can help these like sixty women in these two hundred? 
mm -hmm. is I think just by opening some small projects which mm -hmm. can help us, especially we were talking about making our own sabuni and we sell these things, uh, you know, we sell this sabuni. The, this sabuni belongs to Kilimani Women uh, Project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we sell this sabuni and we, we can give out, we can sell and we, we, we advertise ourselves and people can come for this sabuni. You know, this is the first project that we are, we are talking about. We were talking about the sabuni and we can make things like laundry, you know, but okay. these are the long, long time uh, services. We were so, talking so about the current thing that can help us now. So this one, maybe we can call Kilimandi Industries and maybe you yes. can be the managing director. It's okay, no problem. If you can <laughs> I'll appreciate. <laughs> so, Angari, come on in. Yeah, but uh, since, sure. was, since we are so many, I think we can we can look for some. Very you okay. can also help us as a Kilimani project to to at least create some of the the the, the work that can help us because with us we we, we, we cannot know how law how how you have planned for us also. Very good. Let me bring in Wangari because she will have a, an additional perspective. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, what you're saying, Elizabeth, is really is really resonating with me. I'm I'm really. It, it's really uh, in line with what some of the things that we've been trying to to advise some of the the government officials. Because one, if you if you think about it, Elizabeth, and you just articulated this very well, eh, that yeah. in a time where there's almost no money, like in a time where all the money is being redirected or you know they are, the tax reliefs are meaning that the government is not collecting money this is the exact time that people who are in for in informal work or the most vulnerable need the most resources we're talking about kama kama uko na shule their home where they used to have school feeding programs now they have to be at home eating even more food sababu umeongea juu ya deni ya jeni uko na deni na mama mboga it's because of that there's more food being requested or being ordered by households especially in the most vulnerable populations so you're paying more for water you're paying more for food you're paying more for power and then on top of that the children are home and because they most let's speak it out to have young children and they're, they're not staying in the house they're outside playing right there's a lot of insecurity they are vulnerable to predators in society or whatever is happening and even women now when we're seeing even more domestic violence so just at the time when we are suffering and talking about COVID, COVID is the last thing on the mind of people who are vulnerable. People who are vulnerable are thinking about hunger. They're thinking about abuse. They're thinking about, uh, you know, food, roof, uh, uh, roof over their heads. And some of us who are living in, uh, in Kilimani, in our, you know, in the middle and, and, uh, and higher income, we can go to our landlords and say, can we get rent for forgiveness? But this is not something that's being extended to people in, in vulnerable societies. Right, they're not. There's no rent forgiveness. So I'm hearing lots of stories every day in the news of people people being thrown out of their houses because they've not been able to pay rent. So that's really something that's uh, resonating with some of the advice that we've been trying to to give government. Now, part of how gov you know, because government is a very big niki to kikubwa, eh? it doesn't work very quickly, and it sometimes even when it tries to work quickly, it doesn't always get things right. Eh? So when they summer, they're going to give tax relief, CGVAT relief, income relief, but we took our ground, what you who are working in the informal sector do not pay those taxes. So they're not even going to see the benefits of any income uh, relief, tax relief. The Amana, I'm saying there needs to be in-kind support, you know, electricity, water, forgiveness, Wi-Fi, and all of that needs, needs to happen. But I think how we can address, uh, someone asked how we can identify people on the ground. This is something that government is not going to move quick on. Yeah, government already has transfer programs in place, but it takes a long time to set those up and to add more people to, to get to benefit from those. This is kind of now going to squarely fall in the place of private sector and, and communities like Kilimani Project Foundation. If people, associations, kwa ground, wanajua watuake, they know who is vulnerable. They know, if I know, if I live in Kilimani, I know the people in my area who are most vulnerable. I know the people who work, the lady who works in my, in my house. I know, you know, down the street, there's a, you know, there's a, a, a slum area or, or people who are, uh, in, are in need down there. So I, uh, this is where, you know, people coming together to provide and become a community is what's going to help. Instead of people saying, you know, I think I need to raise my fence a little higher because it's insecure. That is exactly the opposite 
response we need now. We need to come together as a community to start thinking of what will work, what are the solutions that will work on the ground. Beautiful, thank you very much. So we're gonna take um, a moment. I can see you, Richard, um, and uh, uh, for raising your hand. So we're gonna take uh, a video now, and then uh, we'll take another round of comments, and then I'll come back to uh, Elizabeth and to Agare to uh, uh, give some comments. And we're almost, I think we're about, we've got another 15, 30 minutes uh, to go. Um, so get your questions ready, and uh, let's see if we can get the video to work. Um, you know, we are, we are based in the Kilimani area, so we think we are royal media, but let's see. Ah, good. As from now, since morning, Natumia app. Na hiyo app, sijapata hata kazi moja hivi. Lakini kuangu watu, wakuangu familia wangu wanatarajia, ni ingie jioni na chakula. Na ukiangalia app bado ina read zero zero. So um, Daniel, that's great. Let's, uh, I think we could do one more. Huh? That's um, an app um, from a um, border border rider. And as you can hear, the app is reading zero, zero. And these interviews were done uh, over the last uh, couple of weeks. They're available uh, in various places. And um, Sababu sasa Nairobi tumekaa wakimbizi hatuna vinatafanya. Kasi hakuna. Kama hatu utapata kitu mtu kupatia kitu unga uende kule. Hiyo unga inasitahili uwe na pesa, ununue mafuta stock ama recharge meko yako. Sukuma unanunua pesa, nyanya unanunua pesa. Tutafanya aje. Tutaishi aje katika hii nji yetu. Ama ni njia kutaka kumaliza population iwe fuku. Hapo ndo tunachiuliza. Wanataka kumaliza population sababu njia ndo itatukulua kila hata hiyo koroni. Great, I think they're going so well. Let's try and get one more, uh, Daniel. There's a, you've got the one of the taxi driver? Let's try that one. Okay, so we'll take a few questions and maybe we'll close the, uh, with that one. And uh, let me invite uh, Richard to ask his question. He's asked it on the uh, chat, but it's good to also hear his voice. Uh, Richard, Daniel, if you can um, unmute uh, Richard so that he can join us. Richard Kavila. Uh, Richard, are you able to unmute yourself? Oh, okay, yes, I think you've done it. Karibu. I think I'm there now. Yes, good uh, afternoon. Kidamanians. Uh, now, <clears throat> I've just given up. Oh. Okay, we'll come back to, um, we'll come back to uh, Richard in a minute. Um, but actually, maybe we can ask, um, I, don't, I don't see any other hands. So I've got a couple of questions that I've seen on the chat group. Um, to Elizabeth. Yes. You spend many hours in Kilimani. Uh, you have spent many years in Kilimani. Do you see yourself as part of the Kilimani community? If yes, why? If no, why? As part of co as a Kilimani community. Uh, this is what I'm looking for, to be part of Kilimani community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why would that be important for you? Because the way they have come and talked to us there on the road, they are like showing us a way. They are, they are, they are like a light to us because we were in the darkness. We did not know where to start, where to go, what to do. But now since started from the time you came and talked to us and uh, 
uh, have been talking to us, have been uh, helping us in a way like today we are going to have Ugali. Uh, you know, you gave us a voucher today that we are at least, we are going to have something to eat in the houses with our kids. So we are at least having, seeing a way forward. The way you have been telling us, you are going to look for us something. So we are happy with you, Kilimani, because at least we are seeing a way forward now. And, and Richard was asking a question. Would you, be, would you be happy to form a cooperative or a women's group to do your soap making project? Of course, yes. These are the things we are looking for. Mm. Okay, good. Let, let me ask uh, Wangari a question uh, that has been asked. Um, so you, you obviously, um, you know, are an influence and um, are somebody that uh, you are somebody that uh, government takes seriously. I'm curious when you give them advice like this, um, do you feel that they listen? Do you feel that they are appreciative and uh, able to take on your advice? or do you find that it's, it's more difficult? I think at a time like this, um, right now what government is doing, it's getting a lot of advice from different corners. So they are taking in all the advice. They are very open to getting advice, but what you see actually happening in practice may be a kind of, uh, you know, a mix of those different policy positions mm -hmm. or advisory services that you've given them. Uh, so we may not see some uh, direct uh, translation of the advice on the ground, uh, but they are listening, they are taking it in, uh, but the degree to what is, how it's implemented sometimes gets uh, uh, processed, I, I should say. And it's a shame that uh, Honorable Sakaja is not with us uh, now, because this is really a question I would like to ask him. Um, and it's something maybe Wangari you're familiar with, which is the relationship between parliament um, and the two houses of parliament and the executive and really parliamentary oversight. Are you seeing um, uh, you know, a system of accountability during this time? Because sometimes with pandemics, government tends to move very fast. We don't have an auditor general. There's the potential for corruption. And uh, I think we already started to see in one of the counties, um, Mutungis that are probably the most expensive in the world. Even the Japanese, I think, would find them too expensive. Um, what about the system of accountability? Are you seeing uh, this? Um, period being one of danger or one that is fairly well managed? It's a very, it's a very dicey situation because right now we have to really move fast. And the systems of accountability are built in such a way that you have time to uh, look at what has been done, assess how the money has been used, evaluate whether it has been effective, and then ask the right questions. Right now, there's really not that much time for, for doing that. There is an issue. Uh, we need to find money, we need to spend that money, and then we'll answer uh, much later. So our mm -hmm. accountability in the, in the, on the ongoing processes is not strong. And actually, it has never been strong even uh, pre-COVID. It always has happen it happens at the end. And even when we see a lot of problems when we look at the Auditor General, audit in the reports, we see a lot of, of issues being brought up, but are they really being addressed? And I would say the answer is no. So even if we do have systems of accountability, what are we doing once we have that information? And maybe uh, we might have a little bit more insight on that uh, because they're very strongly in that area. But I think it, it's, it's an area that's lacking. Yeah. I mean, one of the um, things that I think shocked many of us uh, was the statement by the cabinet secretary, uh, Buana Munya, who said that um, the social protection fund, um, they estimate that for every two people that get support, only one of them is genuine. Um, so 50% of government support to the elderly, uh, to people with HIV AIDS and, the, um, and people who are uh, the third category. So HIV AIDS, elderly and people with disabilities um, and the very vulnerable are just not covered, um, you know, are, are essentially not being covered effectively at this time. So again, this is an issue. Um, Wanja Kirago on the line is asking a question about if um, housing and the and rent is critical, um, can we can our chief and I guess the chiefs in um, uh, Kilimani sorry in uh, Kibra Kaungwari and Kangemi these are the communities that are closest to us but actually all the two hundred uh, informal settlements across the city is there a way in which evictions uh, could be um, frozen uh, during this time I don't know whether Wangari, you'd like to speak about this. And maybe, Isabel, you can tell us whether you have seen uh, people in your community who have been evicted from their homes and how are they, how are they coping with this? 
Um, shall we go first with Elizabeth and come back to Wangari, sorry. Okay, kuhusiana na mambo ya kulipa nyumba. Na kutolewa kwa nyumba. Okay, mambo ya kutolewa kwa nyumba kile mini naweza kusema imekuwa ni imekuwa ni pigo kubwa sana kwetu kama watu ambapo tunalipa tunaishi kwa Islam. Kwa sababu unakuta majority kama sisi mimi ambaye ninaishi Kawangware manyumba nyingi pale unajua ni wale ambaye ni um, um, moja ya tribe ambaye ni tribe moja ambaye ni wakikuyu. Na hawa ni watu ambaye wanaelewana sana katika jambo moja wakisema wanaongea moja. Maana tunakuta hata wakati nyumba imepandishwa bei utakuta kila plot uti, utaenda utakuta nyumba imepandishwa bei. Kwa sasa hivi ambapo tunaishi shida ya kulipa nyumba utakuta kwamba ukienda kwa ukienda kwa kila ama ulize rafiki yako kwamba wewe umelipa nyumba na iko namna gani wako na jambo moja ambaye watasema kama mimi nilienda kwa landlord wangu wakati niliona nimelemewa sina hata ndururu wa kulipa nyumba nikaenda kwa landlord nilisema sitaenda kwa agent kwa sababu agent ameandikwa nikaenda mpaka kwa landlord wangu kile aliniambia aliniambia ni jaribu sana hata kama nitapata kidogo kidogo lakini mwezi siishe kabla sijalipa nyumba nikamuelezea kwamba mimi sahi niko nyumbani sina mahali ambaye nitasema ninatoka niende hata kama ni 300 nilete hiyo 300 nisanyi kwa wiki moja nikupatie lufu moja aliniambia yeye hataki kujua kwa sababu si yeye alileta corona kwa hivyo mimi hata sasa hivi niko hata nikipata ugali kukula sina raha yoyote kwa sababu ujui kesho anakuvuta kwa nyumba atakutoa kwa nyumba watu wengi kama wa mama ambaye niko nao mimi ni, ndio nilikuachia lady wa group yangu ambaye inaitwa Riara Road tuko wanawake 22 na, na kati wa hawa wa mama wote hakuna mama mwenye amelipa nyumba mwezi jana na huu mwezi yenye tuko kwa sababu hakuna ukipata kama shilingi hamsini kama sasa hivi unaweza kuta mtu mmoja ameenda kwa barabara kuna wa mama ambaye hawana shida sana na hii mambo ya corona atakuchukua kama hasa hii wakati wa waislamu wamefunga kuna waoria wa wale wanakuja wanataka wa mama kuwasaidia kuosha vyombo kuwasaidia kufua nguo mtu akienda pate shilingi ya tano atakuja naye hapa kwa mawe akirudi utakuta kila mtu anamuomba 50 bob 20 bob ya kununua mboga kwa sababu angalau kuna kidogo unga mtu kuna volunteer walituletea unga kidogo kidogo ambaye tuko nayo tunaweza kula siku mbili tatu eh? pamoja na hii ambayo tumepata leo angalau angalau tuko na kaunga kidogo ambaye inaweza kutopeleka kama siku mbili tatu lakini sasa hiyo tano utatoka naye hakuna mtu ameenda na mia moja juu tuko na umoja na tunapendana sasa unakuta kila mmoja ameenda 300 tuende tununue mboga. Kwa hivyo mambo ya nyumba imekuwa changamoto kwetu sana hiyo ndio kitu cha kwanza ndio tufuate na chakula. Maana uwezi kukuwa na raha hata kukula hiyo chakula kama una una tretini wa kila siku nitakutoa. Mimi niliambiwa jana kwamba leo nilikuwa nihamishwe nika nikauliza watoto ninapiga simu tangu asubuhi wameniambia hawajafika lakini ninajua kesho sitakuwa na amani kwa sababu niliambiwa kidogo kidogo mwezi siishe mwezi ile imeisha nimepigiwa simu bado sijapata sina hata ndururu sasa itakuwa aida unitoe niende kwa jirani kwa sababu kuna wengi pia wameshatolewa wamebeba virago wameenda kwa watu wao ambaye wana uwezo kidogo ya kuweza kulipa hiyo but kwa sasa hivi hakuna kitu tunatarajia kwa sababu tunasema sasa tumesema ni Mungu atuonekanie maana tuna namna yoyote. Asante Elizabeth. Huh? I, yeah. Wangari, do you want to come in on this one as well? Then yeah, you so, um, Go ahead. In response to the, the question around um, whether government should come in uh, or, or what should be done when it when it comes to eviction. The short answer for me is yes. You know why? Because the whole reason we have government, the reason for government being is to make sure it takes care of where the market fails. Where is the market failing here? The market is failing because people have entered into rental agreements with their with, uh, with property owners and they are unable to fulfill those obligations. Why? Not because of the, something that's happened 
because of their internal issues, but because something that has happened like a pandemic and through government measures to restrict the, the activity of the economy, right? So mm -hmm. what government needs to do with this big market failure is to come in in a strong way to protect people from being evicted. Evictions must stop, category must stop. Now, on the other side, as I say this, we're saying then, you know, rent, uh, rental people who have uh, property are in it for business, they're also hurting. This is the reason it, 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 it provided tax relief and it also some funds so the, the economy can, can start to continue to move, right? So now that money has allowed banks to provide loans and, and facilities for people who are distressed, for example, uh, rental property owners, to then look for a reprieve through banking arrangements which have been provided by government. So there is a movement. It doesn't work smoothly. There are hips and bumps along the way. Banks don't often want to rent to people who uh, don't have strong or reliable structures. But this is the whole reason that we have those kind of facilities and, and things going. So yes, government must come in a strong way. People should, st nobody should be evicted. And uh, people who are seeing less income from rental, uh, from rental arrangements need to look for support through banking arrangements that has been done through the central bank. Let, let me just uh, follow up on that question. Um, and I'm gonna link it to a question that Purity has just asked again, um, which is how, do go how does government, what does government need to do to be better prepared for emergencies just like this? Um, um, and she raises the question about whether our um, current indebtedness um, and our over-reliance on um, importation of items um, whether these two elements um, are part of the vulnerability that we have at the moment. And if I can tidy that question up a little bit and bring you back to the housing. So the, the problem is that the landlords are not getting their rent. Um, so there's a, a knock-on effect. In your view, what would you recommend uh, that government should do with landlords uh, that um, have, to, have to charge, have to recover rent? How would you um, advise government to support those landlords so that they don't um, throw out their tenants? We could have a program for rental subsidies, uh, allowing some relief. We should also give them tax relief. People who own properties, we can give them certain tax relief so that they don't follow on uh, to evict people. Uh, tax relief, subsidies, and then uh, the loan arrangements that have already been provided for them. Uh, liquidity through the banking uh, system has been afforded for, for people who own properties. Now, in, to Priority's question, uh, how can we be, be prepared for such emergencies? Uh, one of the challenges that we have here in terms of public finance is that governments are not uh, using or resourcing the county emergency funds. This is because uh, already counties, uh, co governments at the national and county level are also already resource constrained. For, so for them to, to make the case for putting away a stash of money when they need to finance roads, health, agriculture, uh, early childhood education and those kinds of, 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 of functions, it's a very hard sell. Uh, but then the chickens come home to roost when an emergency happens and we have nothing in the, in the emergency fund coffers. The other thing is that we don't have a very good framework for accessing uh, emergency funds. We need to really uh, look at the legal framework for how you access, that, uh, how you access the funds for emergency funds and uh, make that uh, much stronger. In terms of the loans uh, and debt, um, not right now everybody's running to the IMF. The IMF doesn't even have enough to, to provide. It is providing some uh, monies, but it's by far not enough. So we still have to look internally. What are the savings we can, we can make? What is our underlying resilience for this issue? We're lucky here in Africa. I'll give you a statistic. Here in, uh, in Kenya, we've not had a high uh, you know, effect as many countries. And people say, you know, oh, we have not... We've not had a lot of testing and all of that. And I think all of that comes to bear. But if you look at the numbers, even though we've not had as many cases, we're seeing the rate, the death rate is just as high as in China and the US. By this, I'm saying for every one person, every 50 people in the population who are affected, one person is dying, right? So it's about a rate of about 5% uh, death rates for people who are infected. So we, that rate is much similar to, to what's happening in China, what's happening in the US, some of the, the places that had the highest incidence. So then we have to ask ourselves, what is our underlying resilience? How are we financing healthcare? How are we making sure societies are able to, to take a hit and still uh, survive and go forward? 
So I think that's a charge to the government. And I wish Bana Sakaja was here, Honorable Sakaja was here. Uh, these are the things that we need to make sure going forward, any shock that happens to the economy, we're able to buffer it so that we can uh, be able to take uh, go forward without uh, much of a, without a big blow to the economy. We're going to bring in um, a, uh, another special guest um, uh, by video. So I'm going to invite Daniel if he can uh, queue up um, the uh, last of the videos. And uh, it's a, a gentleman that um, you might find actually driving a, along the streets of Kilimani one of these days when you hail for a cab. Let's pull it up. Uh, kitu ya kwanza mm. kitabu unachua kama hivi hali yako mchukua na pepa watu waini mm. saa hini habio ni bebe mtu mmoja mm. sasa hiyo ni challenge hivine kwa sababu watu mm. wengi wa maybe watu watani wanataka kuenda mbali mahali mm. saa hiyo ya wezi chukua magali tatu ifuatane so hawaendi mm. hata kama hakuna pesa mm. na vitu zegine lazima yekele mm. lazima ukule lazima Great. Thank you very much. So again, it's not just domestic workers, it's not just uh, border border riders, it is also taxi drivers. Um, I'm sure if we had done one of um, uh, you know, the uh, fruit, fruit vendors and the, the um, restaurateurs that we have across uh, different parts of the, the uh, all our neighborhoods, even the ones that are not in Kilimani, uh, we would hear a similar story. So I'm going to um, take maybe the last set of questions, if there are um, questions. I think um, I saw Mugo's question kind of was a bit close to purity, so I, I hope that's um, covered. Um, and uh, we'll take maybe one or two before we close. And I had one that had been raised um, about the foundation itself. And uh, maybe I can take that one now. So the Kili Cares project was started uh, about uh, two weeks ago, really. I mean, if you think about the, um, the, the beginning of this, really it's been just two weeks. And about five days ago, we put, into, put in place an Mchanga. We created the capacity for people to transfer their bonga points. And, um, this is really what we are up about, you know, we're up against um, over the next, uh, I guess, two to three months. We have committed that we will support all frontline health workers and police officers with gloves and masks and uh, other PPE. Um, we have also said that we will um, raise resources to give food packages to the vulnerable and, and the homeless um, so that they don't have to stand on the sides of streets uh, waiting to be arrested um, or you know, spend long hours with no work um, because there is no work there, um, as you've heard from Elizabeth. And to date, we have managed to raise through that um, pay bill uh, there. Um, I think it's in the range of about 100,000 shillings um, uh, just over the last three to four days. What we're asking everybody to do at this point is to take a note of that. Please screenshot that uh, in PESA. You can also find it on our social media pages, Facebook and Twitter. And we're asking people essentially to give what they can um, and just give regularly. Um, so it's not a one-off thing, as you can hear, uh, rent is not paid once during the period of COVID, it's, it's paid monthly. Um, and I think coming to the question that's been, uh, which was part of that question, I think there was a sub question in the other one. Is it possible for us to consider supporting rent? Of course it is possible. Um, and as we're hearing from Elizabeth and as we saw from the survey, that is one of the areas that are really, um, is really threatening the lives of, of very many people. But we need your support to be able to do that. If you are interested in, in doing this, um, I'll ask Daniel just uh, as a last comment to just put up um, our contacts and um, uh, you can call us, you can um, tweet us, you can uh, reach out to us uh, in any, any way that you can so that we can, um, first of all, we're able to take your donations, but we are also able to include you in one of the working groups. We have set up uh, a group called the uh, Kili Captains. Um, these are street marshals across uh, Kilimani. They are responsible for the uh, people on their streets and they help essentially to, um, to support uh, these processes. So um, maybe um, I can ask uh, Daniel, we'll take just, let's take a minute to, um, 
I guess, to show this uh, PowerPoint. And um, the PowerPoint really brings us to the, um, uh, the end of the first season of the Kili Logs. And there have been five of the Kili Logs. Um, this is the fifth uh, edition. And uh, if there's a demand, we will continue doing different themes each, um, each week. But uh, let me invite um, Daniel just to give us a little bit of a, a memory lane um, before we uh, uh, take a couple of questions. Uh, I think I can see Annie and um, uh, Richard uh, also here.
great. Thank you, Tanya. Super. Thank you very much. And we've taken a bit of time partly because um, uh, it gives you a sense of what a community can do. And if I was to tell you that all of that work um, has been done with probably one paid employee, everything you're seeing there is voluntary work. And um, uh, as I think Isaac Warambo has uh, requested to be a volunteer, we are very open um, for community leadership to emerge. Um, thank you very much to, um, I think it's Koi who's talked about an adopt a family initiative. Um, Wangari is, uh, I think, responding to Kavila, Richard, that uh, micro lending is great. We would take up some of these suggestions. What I'd like to do now is just to offer some closing remarks. Um, anything that uh, is left unsaid. Um, and uh, we can start maybe with Elizabeth, even if it's just to say, Kwaheri, it has been a pleasure. Or um, you people, I need to get back to my home. It's getting close to curfew. Uh, whatever <laughs> you want to say to us, Karibu Kwanza, I love where to tend the Wangari. Okay, asante sana. Mimi kuna swali uliuliza na nimefikiria baadaye ni kama si kuweza kujibu hiyo swali nzuri. Uliuliza kama mama ambaye ako katika barabara ya ya, ya Riara Road ambapo anakaa hapo kutafuta kazi, mungetusaidia kuwa njia gani? Yaani yale manjia ambaye mungeweza kutusaidia. Okay, tuliongea tukasema ya, 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 zile vitu ambazo tunaweza kufanya maana sisi sio uh, we are not we don't have any disability tuko na nguvu ya kufanya tuna mkono we are really we are really want to do something hata biblia inasema kwamba tukule katika jasho lako na tunatamani sana kufanya kazi lakini ni ile hatuna njia vile tutawa, tutafanya hiyo kazi kazi imekuwa ngumu hapa Kenya hata hapo awali hata before corona ilikuwa iko shida lakini kwa sababu ya huko corona imekuwa zaidi hapo awali hata wamama ungewapata wakiwa Mia mbili vile unawaona sasa hivi wanakuwa kama nyuki kwa barabara hatukukuwa hivyo lakini kwa sababu ya hii shida na wakubwa wa, wa pia hao ambao wanatupea hizi kazi pia unajua hii changamoto iko hata kwa manyumba zao sasa mtu anakuambia hata sina pesa ya kuajiri watu wawili sina pesa ya kuajiri mfanyikazi wacha nikae kwa nyumba mimi nikitumia washing machine yangu nguo nitakuja kwa mkono maana hata mimi sina kwa hivyo changamoto ambayo tuko naye kwa hiyo sasa ni ni hiyo tu hata hatuwezi pata kazi yoyote ndipo sasa tunafurahia sana kama government wetu mimi nikiweza kukutana na na mheshimiwa na, 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 na president wangu kwa sasa hivi mimi ningepigia magoti niseme baba sijui nitaelekea wapi sijui kama mimi sikukua mwana Kenya nirudishwe kule ninastahili ni, ni, ni maana sijui ninastahili nina kukua inji gani ile inji ambayo kwa tunaishi kwa sasa hivi ni inji ambaye hatujielewi sisi tuko na MP wetu tuko na machief unakuta chief ndiye anatukimbisha kwa barabara unakuta una unakimbia unaanguka hata kuna siku amenikimbisha hata sweta yangu ambaye nilikuwa nimevaa imepotea kwa barabara kwa sababu sijui ninaelekea pande gani tulijiuliza sana maswali mingi tulikuwa wana Kenya ama tuliletwa kutoka nchi nyingine sasa sisi tuko registered tuko wa mama ambapo tuko pale wakati wote kama kuna usaidizi ile ambayo unaweza kutusaidia sisi wenyewe tunajijua tunaketi katika barabara fulani tuko watu fulani tunajua hata wengine tunajua na mpaka kwa manyumba kwa hivyo sisi tunaweza kuregister kama wamama tuweze kufanya jambo fulani ambayo mtaweza kutusaidia pia pamoja na serikali pia watu angalie tutaweza kufurahia kwa hivyo mimi nimefurahi katika hii project ya Kilimani ninaona nina, ninashukuru sana Mr. Irungu pamoja na madam wametushika mkono na tunafurahia ninajua kulingana na vile wametushikia kwa hizo masiku tumekuwa pamoja tutaenda mbali pamoja na tukiwa na tumaini na kwa sasa hivi ninasema kuna wamama ambapo wako kwa barabara sio kwa sababu wanatafuta kazi bali wako kwa barabara kwa sababu hawana chochote wanasikia leo Elizabeth ameenda kwa barabara leo e, Irungu amemuita amempatia vocha ya elfu moja afanye shopping kesho watatoka wawili watatu ndipo sasa ukipewa kitu kama hii unajinyamazia tu kwa nyumba maana kesho wataja ishirini na hakuna chochote ambapo watakuja wakapata kwa sababu 
hii kitu imekuwa ni shida kwa kila mtu hata wadozi hawa ni wachache ambayo wana, wana waku willing kuweza kusaidia kwa sababu hata wenyewe hawana una tunawaelewa kwa sababu walikuwa wanatuhitaji na wanatupea kwa hivyo mimi nimeshukuru sana misairungu pamoja na familia ambayo wanafanya naye nimeshukuru sana na nimefurahia sana na ninajua with goals all things are possible tutaendelea pamoja Asante. Well, Gary, let's uh, invite you to make your closing remarks. And, and maybe introduce that young lady that uh, came there. You're on mute at the moment. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, my my daughter is uh, not understanding why I'm working on a Saturday, but uh, oh. you know, I come back, she might come back. Um all right, so yeah. I'll, I'll I, I want to give my closing remarks and, and, and give uh, three directions to three different uh stakeholders. So first is government. I think government should really consider providing in-kind support uh, to the most vulnerable in our society. And again, I, I talk about electricity, free electricity, free water, uh, and free Wi-Fi, uh, and then uh, and, and try to make sure that their resource uh, protect them from getting evicted and making sure that they have food on their table. So that's for government. The second, I would say for private sector. Private sector, this is your time to pivot. Thinking about if, if you're in a business that may not be functional, think about what you're putting in place now to actually pivot, uh, to be able to survive and to even uh, be uh, thriving in a post-COVID world. Uh, what huge offices when my why is it renting offices so people who have offices need to think about how you're going to pivot maybe you want to have co-working spaces when you want to have uh rental at at um at shorter for shorter periods of time this thing of going into uh, rental agreements for six years is going to end uh if we start working from home what's that going to mean for restaurants people are not going to be eating in restaurants anymore the delivery services are going to come up strongly uh what about uh, services that you can provide for people while they're in the houses so that's going to really change and that's a space that starting to open up. It was there already, but it's starting to widen. Uh, events, uh, people are not going to be con going for concerts the way they used to go, you know. There's going to be hygiene uh, issues, uh, you know, people proximity issues. So even if you have an event that you have to have, you used to have a big sponsor, you need to think about how you're going to integrate that into, into your uh, events going forward. Public transportation already, we're seeing social distancing there. That might be a permanent change. It might not be, but they're already, you're already seeing there, there are some changes. Um, and then on the, the third uh, stakeholder, I'd say is uh, for, for citizens, people who are part of a community at all, all levels, and especially the middle to high income, income families. How are you supporting your local community? How are you an active member and a contributor to resolving some of the challenges that are happening in the community? How do you give back? And I think so, we're seeing some communities are changing from the positive, but you do hear stories of people trying to, thinking about uh, shutting out people who are vulnerable, and making them even more vulnerable. I'm talking about building bigger walls and putting electricity fences and things like that. It's a really good look at ourselves, look at our hearts. We should spend our energy there. Mm, I think uh, Wangari's uh, Wi Fi is um, letting her down there. Um, give a moment to just uh, to see whether she picks up but i think you know the the, the comments um, are great and i think at four three four different levels we can take away many of the recommendations that um wangari is proposing hi sorry where did i get cut off uh you are sorry communities we're just at the point of people getting engaged in their community yes yes i was just saying instead of take a good look at yourself take a good look at your heart and start building higher walls and start spending that energy that you're thinking about building higher walls, and I say this figuratively, uh, to start thinking about how can we support the, the vulnerable in our community? How can we, what are the ideas that we can put forward and support that we can put forward to make sure that the most vulnerable are, are uh, they have a safety net? Great, wonderful. Thank you very much, uh, Elizabeth. Thank you very much, Wangare. Um, I think many, many things that we could carry away from this. I think one of the nicest things that uh, was said on the chat group was um, uh, much respect to Elizabeth, um, 
they uh, they see you, they hear you, they see your leadership in the community, and they tell you to keep uh, leading. Um, and I think there are many recommendations this evening about how you could register. Maybe you could form Kilimani Industries, and they would be a cooperative, so it would be owned by you as women. Um, and uh, really, maybe something will come out of this that is even bigger than uh, when you came into COVID. So I, I really wish you all the best uh, um, and with the ladies uh, across uh, Kilimani. To Wangari, I think, uh, as always, incisive, clear, um, economically grounded and uh, passionate. And I think, you know, we, um, uh, we need to hear more of you, I guess, in, in different spaces. So I, um, I'm very proud that um, actually, if I can just tell a story about you, if you don't mind, um, Wangari was actually there at the beginning of the foundation. In fact, one of the very first activities that was run, um, a movie that uh, called Nairobi Half-Life, which funny enough was not very different from some of the conversations we're having now about inequalities in different communities. Um, so it's great to, um, after eight years, to uh, have you back uh, educating us and giving us clarity. Um, on you. behalf of the organizers, very welcome. Thank, on behalf of the organizers, our apologies for Honorable Sakaja. Um, um, I will hold him accountable to, um, there had to be a pandemic or something happening for him not to have been with us uh, this uh, evening. Um, but I, we have somebody taking notes, so I think we will make sure that um, a small note goes to him on some of the insights. And uh, maybe we can even bring him uh, to meet with some of the ladies on the uh, streets of Kilimani so that as he's in Senate, he can also provide some guidance that is uh, qua ground. Uh, thank you to all of you who have joined us this uh, evening. Um, uh, there are a lot of great uh, proposals that have been made by several people. And I think the, um, uh, we can, as a foundation, take that forward. Lastly, just to say that, you know, the foundation is not an NGO. It's not a community limited by guarantee. It is, it is actually a community foundation. So it works primarily on community energy. Please challenge us, push us, uh, get us to do things differently. And if you really like these format of uh, Kililogs, um, uh, maybe we can, uh, we'll get another moderator and a few more speakers and we will continue doing this into the next season. So um, good night, everybody. Stay safe, um, stay sanitary, wash your hands after you uh, press the uh, leave button and um, stay, uh, stay well. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Elizabeth. Thank you, Rongo. Wow, Sunday. Congratulations. Now we're going to do it. Sanja, Sanja. 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 Sanja, I'm going to end up on the Zambu. I'm going to end up on the Zambu.